Okay, hey guys, my name is Amir Ivani and I'm a second year medical student at the Akhan University. And today I'm joined with a very good friend of mine. Um, please introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Adam Khan Moman from the United States. Uh, I have a batch of 2025 at Akhan Medical College. Yeah, so he's a first year medical student and I'm a second year medical student. He recently um, got into ATU. So I thought we could make a quick video about the whole process, the whole um, coming to Pakistan because we get a lot of questions about and adjusting to Pakistan. So he's like the perfect candidate to make this video. All right, so I guess the first question is, um, what was the application process like? I know the application, so for the viewers who are watching this, the application process this year is completely new. Um, all of you are gonna have to take your national MBCAT, so SATs are no longer accepted. Um, all of that is no longer accepted. So they don't even exist anymore. To be yeah, they don't even exist. So um, good luck for you guys. You're gonna have to take the MDCAT. You're gonna have to take the AQ test. But generally speaking, how was the application process like? Was um, it done over courier? What was it like? So it's something that your parents are gonna have to do for you, uh, especially since if you're someone like me who's been born and raised in the U.S. Yeah. Because it's a very very difficult process, and usually people like your parents will have connections with people like that can help you. Agreed. Um, the one part that's still going to be translated to uh, this new process is going to be the international equivalent certificate. Agreed. Uh, and that's going to be extremely difficult. My parents had to ask so much help from my uncles who lived in Asamba, like right by all these places, and they barely got done on time. That's something you need to get rolling right away. Agreed. Um, yeah, so um, what he's talking about is the equivalent certificate, and it's a piece of document that basically converts your, your GPA or your grades or your A-level grades to the Pakistani percentage system. Because when you're applying to Pakistan, you need that certificate. So yeah, and obtaining that must be super hard. Yeah. And some weird things about it is like, for example, my school doesn't have a brochure, and part of that uh, requirement is to have a brochure from your school. And Interesting. It was really weird, and since my school doesn't have brochures, it was a really awkward spot. Yeah. Uh, so my dad talked to like one of the administrators there, a really nice guy. He actually made a brochure right there and then just, just for that. Just for that. Oh wow. It's not only a problem for you, even for me. When I made my equivalency, when local students in Pakistan make their equivalency, converting their A-level grades to the percentage, it's super complicated. Um, the, the, the courier service is crap. Um, everything about it is really, really bad. So first thing you see this video, look, go to the IBCC website. I'm gonna link it down below. You have to go through that website, see what the process is like, see what documents are required. It's a pretty basic list of documents, but it's gonna be complicated. Yeah. So paper trail. don't forget a paper trail. Keep all your receipts. I so if they lose your stuff, you better <laughs> make sure you yeah. know where it is. They lose a lot of certificates, original certificates. So that's really bad about them. All right. So I think the second question: Why didn't you go to the U.S.? Like, why? Why do you decide to come to Pakistan? You know. For me personally, um, you know, the U.S. system. I feel like it's a lot longer than it has to be. Uh, college is a great experience for a lot of people and like, you know, it's what you want to do. If you want to do there, there's no issue with that. But personally, I just didn't feel like wasting extra time there and spending extra money and then stressing over getting into college for, you know, the MCAT and all that. Yeah. So I figured there's no harm in applying to Pakistan somewhere like AKU that's really good and does the same job and, you know, in, there's a big difference in time and cost. Agreed. So it's, it's basically, I think, eight years. So it's four years of undergrad. And then how many, what, four years of um, med school? Med school. That's so that's assuming you don't get like held back. or It's very easy to mess up a class Agreed. in college. Like I have a couple of buddies who, you know, they were supposed to be like classes 2023, 2024. They messed up. And they messed up a few things and they're set back a few years. Oh, so, wow. And it's really easy. These are brilliant guys. So you have to be very careful about that. Yeah. So it's eight years of med school to become a doctor in the U.S. versus five years in Pakistan. And yeah, there's, I guess, the finances, eight years of university versus five years of university. So there's a lot of pros and cons, but like Adam said, it's really up to you, up to the individual, up to the family. You have to consult your family members, you have to consult the people around you, your teachers, and ask what's the best for yourself. Yeah, I agree, I agree with that. Um, okay, let's move on to the next question. So the next question is, um, um, why AKU? Like, out of all the places in Pakistan, there is DIMC, a whole dedicated campus for international students. There is AKU, there is um, universities in Punjab, universities in Sindh. Why do you apply? And did you apply to any other university? And eventually, why do you end up at AKU? So, I did apply to many universities because obviously you can't just, you know, 
focus on one thing. Yeah. You gotta cast a wide net and be grateful for what you get. Mm-hmm. So I did apply to places like AMC, Fauci Foundation, whatnot, like in Saba and these and places. And did you get in? I did, in the boat. Oh, okay, perfect. Uh, for different programs and such. Um, but you know, definitely thinking Al Han was the best choice because Al Han is, there's no comparison to any other medical school. I've talked to people who went to a year of medical school before yeah. coming here, and a lot of them were saying like, we haven't even touched stuff like this, and it's just as hard for them as it is for us. And that's good because we're learning the things that we need to learn on the U.S. standard, and that's why people, you know, know Al Han's name in the medical community over in the United States. Agreed. It's, it's going to really set you apart, and they're going to really give you the skills and things you need to get you ahead. Agreed. Agreed with it, like a hundred percent. I think, even for me as a local student coming to AKU was my number one priority because of the very same reason. Because it is the best university in Pakistan. I'm not speaking that because I study here, but um, it's just facts, yeah. So <laughs> by the numbers and by the numbers, yeah. All right. So okay, let's uh, move on to the next question. The next question: Students from Lahore come to AKU. Students from Islamabad come to AKU. Students from across Pakistan come to AKU. From the Middle East, from Canada, from the UK, and a lot of the time adjusting to Karachi, especially because of the weather, because of the people, because of the cultural difference, can be difficult. How did you adjust to Karachi? How do you adjust to Karachi? And how do you adjust to Pakistan? Like, as a whole, yeah. I have to say that it's been an interesting process. And in the day, the biggest like factor that comes into it is that you have to learn to let go. And by that I mean you can't compare Karachi or Pakistan or wh- whatever from where you come from because the fact of the matter is it's always going to be different. As soon as I realize this is Pakistan, this isn't the States, this, I'm not going to have uh, power all the time if I leave the campus and things like that. Um, I had to accept that and just move on and yeah. eventually, you know, you have to find some kind of rustic difference. I don't know what the words to describe it. I'm not that uh, lingual, I guess. I don't know. Uh, articulate. There articulate with my language. With my language. Yes. I'm, I'm also exhausted. I'm on like four hours of sleep. Um, but um, Alhan is a beautiful place, and there's things you can do to have fun, get your mind off things. Like I like to hang out with some of the guys in the hostels, talk to them. Um, I like to go on walks in the middle of the night. Sometimes do some sports. We got a gym here and like exercise. Sometimes I like to just chill and listen to music. Um, and one defi- uh, definitely really helpful factor is the fact that Al Khan is probably like one of the only universities with individual hostel rooms. Oh, yes. So I have my own private space. space. Yeah. So even if there's no United States out there, this can be my United States. Agreed, agreed. <laughs> yeah. And it might be difficult initially, but eventually you're going to adjust. I can guarantee you that. Yeah, whether, you, I don't know, wherever you're watching this from, you're going to eventually adjust that AQ or in Pakistan. So you're going to struggle in the beginning. You're going to make good friends. You're going to have bad friends, you're going to have like good and bad, but eventually you'll settle within a few months, hopefully. Yep. So what about the hostel experience? We get a lot of questions, like you mentioned, AKU, this is a single hostel room. Um, a lot of other places, I, I know DIMC um, in Karachi has like two beds in one room. Um, how, how, how's the hostel experience been for you so far? So it's nice, man. The fact that my classes are right there and I'm living right here. Yeah. So unlike people like the day scholars here who have to bring everything in the morning and like stress about not forgetting stuff, if I forget something, it's a two minute walk, grab it and come back. For example, I had a class today yeah. and I was like, oh shoot, I don't have my lab coat. And so I just ran here, grabbed it, came back. Well, what about like food and stuff? Food? Uh, you know, definitely got to start learning to make my own food because it's econ is great food. and all. Uh, but it's only like rice, some meat, and like basic out. Like I don't have vegetables and all that. Yeah. Um, so definitely gotta start doing that. Um, what about taking out, like ordering? Ordering food? Food expensive that? really fast. Um, I've learned so. Um, and I, I'm not rich and all that. I'm living on my dad's dollars, so I'm trying <laughs> to be very considerate of that. Yeah. So I'm just trying to live into a, a certain budget that you know we've agreed on, and um, that's one thing. Learn to manage your money in the hostels because you're here alone and. Think of it as an experience. It, it, it to, can get out of control easily. I yeah, I think if I about a ways, it's kind of a segue into like going from living with your parents. Now you're on your own to now you can have your own money and living on your own yeah. once you finish school and get a job. And like yeah, this it's like a follow up to the next question, and that's like personal tips and advice. I think knowing how to do your laundries, knowing how to cook, that knowing how to iron your own clothes, knowing how to um, shop, even shop. The how to shop? Yeah, what to buy, how what not to buy, not stupidly buying unnecessary stuff you don't need, you know? Um, learn to clean because uh, a lot of people here, there's nothing wrong with hiring uh, an Adobe, it's called, in local to like, come and clean yeah. your room and all that. Great guys, they do a great job. But it can get like really expensive, it's like 4,000 a month, which- Wow, that's a lot. Yeah, exactly. And on the US dollar, it's about, right now it's about like what? Uh, $10 is um, it's like $28, somewhere around there, 27. Right. 
Um, but yeah, like paying 4,000 rupees a month for having them coming, you're cleaning your room and washing your clothes. I just bought like six to a year's worth of Tide Pods uh, for 2800 which is a fraction of just one yeah. month. So and there are laundries over, uh, there's a laundry room over here, there's a washer dryer, you do your own stuff, hang it out in the back of your room and um, you can do it yourself or you can always hire someone to do it for you in the hostel. But like you said, 4,000 rupees a month, which adds up. And what, what other tips do you have? Like, because cause I can imagine, I don't know about you, but coming to Pakistan, if for, I don't know about you, you visited Pakistan previously, right? Oh, yeah, maybe. Every now and then, right? So it may have been a little bit easier for you, but for a lot of our audiences, coming like their trip to take like the MCAT or whatever is probably their first or second time in Pakistan. So there is probably the cultural shock, there is language barrier, there is a lot of different factors. Um, like what, how, how, what advice would you give to like overcome some of these barriers? Again, it's coming back to like, don't hold on to where you're from. Again, be more accepting of the culture and learn that like, that you're in a new country, this is not your place. Okay. Um, one thing that I'm well, trying this to- This is your place. Like if I mean, you, yeah. your parents were born here, most probably, yeah, like it depends how you see it, but- Yeah, yeah. I, I guess in the means, just like one thing that I have a bad habit of doing is I just kind of be American, which is, I don't want to say that, just really, uh, a lot of things that I might do, that are cons uh, that are considered normal back where I'm from might be very rude here. Agreed. And, and I that, that stems down to the cultural difference. Yeah, some of perhaps some of the the way you walk could be a little bit different. You never know. There's a lot of small small things that differs country to country. And I guess yeah, even the way you talk, the way you the jokes you make, sarcasm, um, sarcastic jokes, uh, people don't get over here a lot of the time. So yeah. it's quite so different. I guess a big thing is don't be afraid to change. You know, yeah. you're here. Uh, definitely start learning what language in Tibet speak. I didn't speak a lick of Urdu uh, in since, and I've been learning since June. Uh, I've learned quite a bit thanks to the people around me. I had a really great Urdu teacher, and um, I just say learn what's important. Practice with your friends every chance you get. Yeah. Um, it might feel a bit lonely or like kind of like awkward sometimes if you don't understand Urdu, and because people naturally are gonna start speaking around you in Urdu and all that. But just kind of stick through it, okay. and eventually you're gonna start picking up on things and do your best to just try and join in. Yeah. Uh, it'll make it easier. Yeah. You have to adjust here. Um, you're going to be here for five years if you decide to come here. So you're going to be interacting with patients. You're going to be interacting with doctors. You're going to be interacting with the guards over here, the, the people who sweeps the floor. You know, you're going to be interacting with all people across the university. So you will have to know what we're doing. You know, especially as for the profession you're um, planning to be. Um, if you can't communicate with the patient, what are you going to treat? You know, mm -hmm. so. Try learning Urdu. You, I wouldn't say you need to know the best Urdu when you come here. You're gonna pick it up um, within very the first two years. Yeah, by the third year you're gonna uh, you're gonna speak it very fluently. But yeah, knowing how to uh, budget, uh, handling your money, knowing how to grocery shop, how to clean your own clothes, how to do your laundries. These are all things most of the guys. Not only you coming from abroad, even guys coming in from Lahore and Islamabad had to learn and adjust. You know, mm -hmm. so. Um, that's the hostel experience for um, a lot of the people. Um, so yeah. Um, oh, I, duct tape. Why? I have a lot of tape. Uh, yeah, you need tape to close your door. <laughs> like close windows that you don't opening, fix things. <laughs> tape is your best friend. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. So yeah, and you you have to get used to the heat in Karachi. It gets super hot. Yeah. I don't know about. <laughs> Just, um, I'm saying this while you're wearing. Hoodie. I'm from uh, Colorado. It's like I went from cold, dry air to you know, cause I, up in the mountains, Mile High City to goddamn the Karachi, which is you know uh, forty degrees Celsius half of the time. Exactly. So yeah, um, I think it was a very uh, good discussion. If there's any questions, uh, make sure to comment down, comment them down below. I'll try answering them. Um, if your question is about the application process. The application process is something I can't even answer. It's something um, you're gonna have to um, experience for the first time because it is completely new. PMC changes the whole process. So no more SATs. You're gonna have to take the MDCAT. You're gonna have to take the AQNG test, all right? So that's that. The process is very similar to every other local student. So you're pretty much competing with the local student. So it will get super competitive for you. Yeah. Do you have any last remarks before I end the video? I've never stood so still for 17 minutes. <laughs> Alright. 
All right, so thank you so much for watching. Um, like this video, share it with your friends, share it with your cousins, share it with your parents. Um, subscribe to the channel for more content like this. So thank you so much. Um, make us make sure to follow us on Instagram at random and more underscore. Um, subscribe to the channel, like, share, and yeah, good luck.